Hi everyone, this is Boomer for Caravel Gaming, and welcome back to Magic 2014's Revenge Campaign. Uh, in this episode, we'll be taking on a journey, and uh, the deck I have chosen to take that on with is the Masks of the Demir deck. We've already seen it. Um, however, I will uh, let you know what I have or how I have configured the deck in order to take a journey on. Uh, you can already see there are some cards up here which the computer cast against me when I was up against the Master of the Demir deck. So really this is a configuration in order to take on a journey. We have 25 land, 3 thought scour, target player puts the top 2 cards of his or her library into a graveyard and draw a card. Um, really just a card draw spell. 4 Demir guild mage, uh, 2 hybrid mana of each, 2-2. Uh, can draw a card for four or make a player discard a card for four. Three, four last gasp, uh, two mana target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. I love the flavour text on some of these cards. A hands of binding, which is tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. And cipher, which means if you have a creature in play, you can encode this card onto it. And whenever it deals combat damage, you can cast the spell. Uh, two threads of disloyalty. Uh, we saw this, I think we've already seen this in the red deck. If not, enchant creature with converted mana cost two or less, you control it. One consult the necrosages, three mana, draw two cards, or target player discards two cards. A time ebb, took target creature on top of its owner's library, a way of removing a creature with a bucket load of enchantments on it, all the enchantments will fall off. Two Divination, draw two cards. Two Evil Twin, which is two blue-black. It comes into the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except against blue-black, tap, destroy target creature with the same name. Generally, this is going to copy one of your guys who has an ability like Bounce a Creature, like you saw him do it with Vidalkin Dismissor. For Moroi, we've already seen our opponent lose to this twice when he's been playing this deck, but this is a really efficient, good creature. Um, two Archaeomancers, two blue blue for a 1-2. When it enters the battlefield, return target instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand. I've put two lobotomies in the deck for this. It's two blue black. Target player reveals his or her hand. You then choose a card other than a basic land card. Search that player's graveyard, hand and library for all cards with the same name as that chosen card and exile them. That is to try and get my opponent's armored ascensions before he uh, drops them. Um, it might not be that great, to tell you the truth, and I might end up changing. Uh, I might end up changing what I play there, but I think it's still fine. Sleep, really good to tempo card. Two blue blue tap all creatures target opponent controls. Those creatures don't untap during that player's next untap step. And we finally get some creatures now. Shadowborn Demon. We've seen this guy before. Three black black for a 5-6 flyer. He's basically just a kill target creature spell. Um, very, very occasionally um, we will have creatures in the graveyard, but that's not very likely for the most part. He's really just a kill target thing spell. Um, Three Vidalkin Dismissers, six mana for a 2-2 two, two that casts Time Ebb when it comes into play. And a Spinal Embrace, which allows me to steal one of his really big creatures. Um, untapped target creature you don't control and gain control of it. It gains haste until end of next turn. At the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice it. If you do, you gain life equal to its toughness. Okay, so what have I left out? An Acropolis Regent. Big old flying dude. Pretty good card for sure. Doomsday Spectre's a bit slow. I've taken out pretty much all the discard from the deck that was in it. Uh, in favour of just trying desperately to hold on to what my opponent has in hand. Gas Lord of Fugue. 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four, can't be blocked. When it deals combat damage to a player, that player reveals his or her hand. You choose a card from it and that player exiles that card. It's okay, but a bit slow. Dire Undercurrents is also slow. 5 mana, when a blue creature enters the battlefield, I can draw a card. When a black creature, I can make him discard a card. Bit slow. Mind Leech Mass costs 8. Um, its effect is undoubtedly powerful, but it uh, costs 8 and it's just really slow. Reigns of Power, same deal again. I don't want to be playing this card. Followed Footsteps. Actually... 
Do I want to put followed footsteps in over... I'm actually going to put it in over Lobotomy. I think Lobotomy is a little bit of a... Uh, little bit of a magical Christmas land card. Whereas followed footsteps, if I put it on, say, either an Ikea Mansa, or I put it on an Evil Twin, or I put it on a Vidalkin Dismissor, is obviously the magical Christmas land. Um, it means that I can... Um, it means that I get a copy of everything that my opponent does. Yeah, beginning of your keep put a token that's a copy of Enchanted Creature on the battlefield. It's really good in this matchup. Um, stolen Identity, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target artifact or creature. I really don't want to be putting so much 6 at the top end, but yeah, I'm playing 25 land. Do I cut my Roy's maybe? I'll cut the hands of binding, that feels a bit... Yeah, I don't have enough creatures to do a lot with it, I think. What else have we got? Dim Rover Horror is 6 mana for a 4-4, so it better be incredible. Um, it's not that incredible. Fool's Demise is 5 mana. When it dies, return a creature to the battlefield under my control. And when Fool's Demise put a graveyard from Battlefield return to its owner's hand, I don't really have anything that I want to use there. Illusionary Armor gives a creature plus four plus four, but it also gives it the illusion ability, and I don't want that. Mental Vapors is four mana to make your opponent discard a card. You need Cypher for that to be good or not. Don't know what she's doing, but uh, yeah, he's obviously not too happy about it, so it can't be uh, too enjoyable. Vengeful Vampire is terrible, don't want to play that. Smog Elemental is also not great, so I'm not going to play that. Surveilling Sprite is okay, but it's not really something that I'd look to in this deck. Treasure Hunt, fine, but not great. Hands of Binding, we've already been over. And uh, Ravenous Rats and uh, Chittering Rats are basically the discard package of this deck. I don't think they're great against this opponent. Slate Street Ruffian, 3 mana for a 2-2, two -two. when it becomes blocked, he discards a card, your opponent can always just not block it. Mine Rot, yep, not great. Mark of the Vampire, expensive for what it does. And finally Shadow Slice, which, yeah, expensive for what it does. So I need one more card back. I'll go for the Hands of Binding, just because it stops my opponent kicking my face in with a really big creature. Uh, yeah, we'll, we will go with that. We will try that. So, here we go. Revenge campaign. And we are up against Ajani and the deck that we played last time. The Guardians of Light deck. So, this should be a, uh, this should be a rather interesting game. Let's put it that way. Okay, that's a pretty good hand. I will keep it. Let's make island first. Now since I have no way to use my graveyard at all, I will actually thought scour my opponent. Um, usually with thought scour you'd use it on yourself, but because I've got absolutely no way to uh, use my graveyard whatsoever, I am just going to... Uh, oh, didn't mean to do that meant to lay the swamp but it's okay because I can uh, I can cast a mere guild mage anyway but yeah that was a misclick I should have put the swamp down fortunately I don't have chittering rats in the deck so that's not going to hurt me long term if he makes a guy I am just gonna actually no I'll hold up mana I'd rather not uh I don't think he can do anything um I don't think he can do anything on three that's going to make me not be... Yes, he can. He can use Divine Favor. I wouldn't be able to kill it through that. So I'm going to actually skip my attack and say go. you just got to be careful about tapping out against this deck. If he offers the trade, I'm actually going to take it because I've got stuff to do with my mana. And I think it's all about keeping his guys off the board for the most part. Um, yeah, he makes Sky Hunter Skirmisher, which again, I'm going to leave alone for the moment. Um, 
I'm just happy to sit here making land. I'm going to attempt to two for one him basically with his uh, with his enchantments. I want him to make armored ascension this turn. Spirit mantle's okay. Again, I can just kill his guy at this point. If he doesn't make a fourth land, I am just going to kill his guy. Right, he doesn't, so I'm just going to straight up kill his guy. Leaves more mana open for next turn. Oh, good. Uh, right, let's cast Divination first. Okay, I think that we are... Uh, I'm pretty sure we're officially good at this point because I'm going to go Vidark and Dismissor into Stolen Identity, which means he's never going to be able to make another creature. Okay, makes Aura Mantle. That's going to pick up the Spirit Mantle. But he didn't draw a land and now he's never going to draw a land for the rest of the entire game. Dismissor. Put that on top of your library. And now it's time to enter the realm of infinite cheese. Makes Mesa Enchantress, okay. Yep. Make an island, cast Stolen Identity, making a copy of this. Encode it on this. Put this on top of your library. Oh, actually, he is... No, I don't want to play the spell, otherwise I'd end up... Uh... Yeah, this isn't over yet. I was being a little bit overzealous there. This is not over yet by any stretch. Yeah, interesting. Well, instead, I'm just going to beat him to death. Then I think that that's probably the, uh, I think that's probably the best way to do things. And to tell you the truth, I've got such a massive, um, I've had such a massive bonus in tempo just off what, just off those two Vidalkin dismisses that uh, I'm not really too concerned. Oh, I should have paid it because I could have copied my Maroi. Idiot. Could have copied Maroi there. Yeah, you can have a Sun Striker, big deal. Yep, take one off the Maroi. Kill your guy. Attack. Yes, I would like to play Stolen Identity. I will copy Maroi. Oh no, it's pacified. I have a pacified Maroi. Pacified copy Maroi, no less. But he's dead, so never mind. So yeah, the power of Vidal can dismiss it pretty much on that one. And our opponent missing his fourth lander, but I don't think it would have mattered. My draw was just really, really good there. Um, I think the Mask of the Demir deck is about as good as you get against the Jarni's deck. Uh, Mono Black deck would probably be okay as well. Really, you're looking at a deck which can remove creatures without any conditions. And I think that uh, the Mask of the Demir deck is really amazing at that sort of thing. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Next time we are going to take on Liliana and we're going to be doing it with Samurai. So that should be worth watching. 
Um, hopefully you like this video. Please like, subscribe and comment down uh, under the video. And until next time, this is Boomer for Caravel Gaming and thanks very much for watching.